Uh, Ian, what else have you been playing uh, recently? Uh, so another one that I got to try this last week. We didn't do a stream or anything. This is just sometimes we play games for fun. It's weird. It's a weird concept. Um, but uh, we got to play Dice Settlers. Uh, it is by David Turksey, uh, who I, I have met. Uh, I got to meet him at Gen Con. He's, nice. he's super nice, super smart. He's uh, he's done Anachrony and Trickerion. Uh, he helped with Kitchen Ooh. Rush. Like he has his name on a on a bunch of boxes. So if you ever see his name, it's usually usually a good product. Um, and the other the but unfortunately that wasn't the main reason I wanted to try Dice Settlers. The main reason I wanted to try it because it has art by the Miko, mm-hmm. um, whose real name I will not try and yeah, pronounce. No. <laughs> Uh, I, the, I do plan yeah, on asking him one day uh, the right way to pronounce it and have him teach me because I, I do want to know how to pronounce it correctly. I just that is just not something I'm currently capable of doing. Uh, but the Miko has probably one of my favorite board game artists. So anytime nice. you put his art on a on the cover of a box, uh, you have like increased your chances like 300 percent that I'm going to purchase it. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> uh is did he also do uh raiders yeah he did the whole north sea trilogy um he, he did valeria all of the valeria games nice. uh horizons uh recently so more of a space mm-hmm. one from daily magic uh a ton of games so many games i've i've uh, looked into his art more recently for research purposes uh but i will s- skim over that <laughs> Yeah, I was looking at Dice Settlers box and immediately the face is like, that's a Raiders face. Because that's how I think I know that's how I think I know his work is the fact that it's like a Raiders face. Yeah, that was probably the first game I had ever gotten with his art on it. And like I saw it on Kickstarter, backed it immediately, and I was like, Oh, this is gonna be great. Worker placement. I love worker placement. This art is is amazing. Vikings are cool. I mean, maybe not historically cool, but you know, in the general sense, Vikings are cool. Um, absolutely i'm from minnesota i'm wearing a vikings blanket right now (laughs) i have to anything vikings related i immediately like right alas continue but yeah so uh dice settlers is a 4x game uh where you start out on one hex and your job is to uh with your with your little township with your settlers and your job is to explore expand exploit and exterminate your way to uh, a bigger settlement, basically, <laughs> than, and gathering the most uh, victory points. I believe there's a thematic name for them, but I don't remember what it was. Uh, in the game, they're like stars, so mm-hmm. whatever the thematic version of that is. Uh, so yeah, and so you, how you do that is you use these dice. So you start with like a bag of dice, uh, and you start with just some generic dice, and then a couple of specialized ones, and you roll a number of dice every round, and then those are the actions that you get to do. Um, so like the more of a certain symbol that you roll, the more potent or number of times you can choose, you can do that action, uh, or the better that action is. You can only do each action once per round, I believe. Mm -hmm. (coughs) Excuse me. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's, I, I really liked the gameplay. Um, the art, obviously the art's amazing. Um, and the the game's a lot of fun, like the the overall flow, and it always feels like you can do whatever you want because mm-hmm. there's a symbol that you can spend before you activate your dice, which is I think the little pilgrim hat uh, that allows you to sort of change a die to any face that you want or just re-roll a number of your dice. Mm-hmm. And you can also spend like your your resources, like there's pumpkins and iron and wood. Um, and gold, I believe. And you can spend those to either like set a die to any face or draw two more dice out of the bag and roll them. So it's sort of like you're never really cut off from the things that you want to do or that you need to do. But some sometimes you roll the dice and you're like, yeah, I could probably get away with this. I could do this. I, I, I don't mm-hmm. have to change anything. I'll just roll with what I have here. But yeah, so like, and then you're, you're like increasing technologies and sort of like uh, researching those by sort of going to these different tiles and then having the required uh, resources to do those. And then also you are like trying to take over the tiles and like turn your little camps, your little tents into actual like settlements. Mm -hmm. And if you can do that, then you're going to gain the points that that tile will give you at the end of the game 
Whereas if not, then it's just whoever has the most tents will get the, the a lesser amount of points for each tile. So yeah, there's a lot of really interesting things going on in the game. My my complaints of the game have nothing to do with the gameplay itself. I think the gameplay and the art is fantastic. I think the like the deluxe version made a lot of mistakes production wise. <laughs> oh really? So I'm looking yeah, I'm looking at pictures. Uh are these three D printed houses? It looks like it. Yeah. Like this is the purple, red, blue, black houses. And then there's like you know the tents. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Is that is that kind of what you're talking in terms of the component quality? Is that maybe the um, concern? It's not. It's not really the quality. It is the. I guess it's the the functionality versus like the regular edition. Okay. So uh, yeah, as you said, there are the deluxe edition upgraded the little wooden cubes into. Uh, for the tents into actual like 3d molded tents and then like the settlements which i believe were just wooden also into 3d molded uh settlements my problem was is i was playing uh i was uh i was using black as my player color and their tents are like super wide they are like twice as wide as any other player's tents and the hexes the hexes are very small like they're not regular size hexes they're small hexes so like Mm -hmm. And you'll have multiple of each player's tent in a space. Like, I only played this two players, so it wasn't that as big of a deal. But I can see if there was, like, three or four tents in one space, that you just wouldn't be able to see anything on this on the actual hex, which you need to. Like, there's victory points, and then there's also an action. And sometimes the action deals with whoever controls it. Or it's a factory, which is, like, an always-on ability that you can use. So, yeah. like, them not being sized properly is annoying. And then you're supposed yeah. to, like, track the how many dice you can roll using this little punch-out track with, like, these punch holes in it. Well, that's mm-hmm. supposed to use one of your tents to track that because your tents are cubes. But since they replaced the cubes with the tents, with, like, the 3D molded tents, you actually have to, like, keep a cube just for that track, whereas right. normally you would get rid of all of those components. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm seeing yeah the, okay yeah so they didn't necessarily keep that in consideration um it's more of a huh. it's definitely a usability issue more than anything else but like i really yeah. like the gameplay like i think the easiest way is just to kind of revert back to the standard components because they're all still there they don't not give you the cubes or the you know yeah. the punch out tokens for the resources and the resources are really nice they're like the iron and gold are, are metal uh, yep. So they have that nice weight to them. And then the other two, I believe, are like a plastic sort of polymer style. And they're like painted. Um, they look very scythe Yeah. Very, very collector's edition scythe when that first came out. Yep. Yeah. The only problem with those are is that they give you less of them than you would get of the tokens. So, But it's not supposed to be play component limited for like what resources you can get. Uh, mm-hmm. So we just kept the token resources in with the regular you know with the deluxe ones just so you'd always sure. have enough no matter what but yeah they they did some usability things with the deluxe edition that uh i don't think they really took into consideration but it doesn't hurt the overall gameplay it just hurts usability which mm-hmm. you which could hurt gameplay eventually and i, I, I wouldn't yeah. want that to happen i don't want people to like play the game be like oh this i couldn't see what was going on half the time and rate it like a two on bgg or something because the gameplay is actually fun yeah absolutely um wow a very uh kind of a unique case in which kind of the standard edition almost seems to be the preferred (laughs) edition over something deluxe is normally like anything any kickstarter these days it's like oops skip past that first tier i want that deluxe tier you know right i want i want those metal coins (laughs) you know uh interesting is this game out yet um, yeah, it just has started delivering to backers, so okay. I believe it should probably be hitting stores soon. I don't know if it has a U.S. release, um, since its uh, publisher is NS- N- Niskin, N-S-K-N yep. Games. Uh, I believe mm-hmm. they are a, a European publisher. I think it would be a better... I mean, maybe. Maybe it'll get a, cent- a second printing if it does. Um, yeah, we'll see, I guess. I'll definitely want to keep this on my radar. You know... I think I saw some dude, I, you know what, I hate to say this, but I think some guy on Reddit played it at Shucks, 
and like pooped on it but like what's new on reddit these days i guess i don't know um someone on reddit didn't like something i right you know like decided to voice that opinion online uh in any case yeah like so dice like i said when he brought this up was like ooh, interesting like especially now that i because of uh because obviously the developer is like Tri- like playing Trikirion, uh anachrony like those types of games i mean that's those are like those are pretty some high class games mm-hmm. i didn't even realize too like petricor was one of them as well uh, yeah did some kitchen stuff uh, I was, yeah. yeah i was gonna say that but i didn't know how to pronounce it so <laughs> i left it off the list uh redacted i you know what i've always been interested in redacted i've never gotten into it you know, know the weird part is uh the miko also did the art for redacted but there's so little art in that game that like i didn't even <laughs> notice until i was looking up art stuff that, like games he's done yeah there he is i had no idea either i've seen this game so many times at, at uh some game stores and I'm like oh, i gotta get it i just never do i always pass up on it mm-hmm. um yeah he did cerebia right cerebia cerebria <laughs> oh man we should probably lay this one to rest oh my goodness um but awesome yeah dice settlers um yeah i mean my... definitely check it out like i i'm not one to like I, I i'm not gonna go on reddit and poop on a game like that's not <laughs> i i always say like you know just talk about the games that you love don't talk about the games that you don't like and then that'll eventually drown out people who are talking about the games that they hate you know um but yeah like the reason i mentioned that stuff is because i think publishers need to be aware that usability is a big part of their deluxe editions or how they deluxify games mm-hmm. like it still has to work we're uh subterra i had played and i was very grumpy at the very beginning of that game because uh the person who had backed it like went all in got all the extra stuff and like got the minis with it yeah. but we were playing with like f- i think all six players like i think we had we were so many people wanted to try that game they were very excited about it so we're playing with that many players and you can fit probably two of those minis on a tile <laughs> oh, and no. you needed to fit all six of them at the beginning <laughs> uh... so we had just had them like in a stack like they were just stacked up and just like on top of each other and upside down <laughs> and however we could get it, it they were they were trapeze artists in addition to spelunkers they were literally scaffolding down the hole into the cave <laughs> right at that point they had all fallen down and they had just stacked upon each other just yeah i actually like i like subterra i actually got rid of it though because in the in the game of like you know, those kind of adventure games. I ended up keeping Summit. Have you heard of Summit before? Summit the board game? I have. I haven't got a chance to play it. I don't know anyone. I don't know. I mean, I probably know someone that has it. That's that's a, That would be a dumb thing to say that I don't know anyone who has it. But um, it's never shown up at one of our local game days. So, uh, Summit's a, I, I think Summit uh, has a great presentation quality from beginning to end. Uh, it has a great uh, adventure flow to it. It's like... It's weird because I think Subterra is kind of like that mix between uh, dungeon crawling and pandemic in terms of like you're flipping this card of bad things that's going to happen. Mm-hmm. And but you're still kind of like, you know, doing some tile revealing and, and moving forward. Um, Summit for me, though, I think just kind of like I had to choose. Right. Like I was just calling my collection and I'm looking at them and I'm like, which one? I'm like, uh, like Subterra was great. Summit's great. I'm going to keep Summit, though. I don't know. How about in, and you like Subterra, except in the fact that the minis were like didn't work. Um, I don't, uh, I don't know that we played an entire game. I think we gave up on it. Mm-hmm. Um, so I didn't get, I didn't get the full experience. But I think we were playing poorly, uh, just because none of us really knew what we were doing. So like mm-hmm. a couple of us went down early, like we were just we we're down, and it it f- shook out in such a way that like I was basically like, don't worry about me. Just continue exploring. You could come yep. get me, but you're probably going to die in the process. So please just yep. keep exploring. I will just sit here and do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> that weird, awkward... Well, yeah, it is player elimination to a, to a degree um, in that game. Now I think about it. I just remember we ended up winning, and it was this... like One of the abilities was like you could heal yourself or something like that. I think it was Peter... Peter Woken and I were playing with another friend of mine, and like I had gone down, and he was like doing this weird awkward like movement between like three tiles in an effort to see how something shook out before like he ended up like coming back for me or something like that and we ended (laughs) up it it was really bizarre but it was kind of a fun moment to like share story-wise just to see like how things were like playing out with with that game 
but alas <laughs> alas I, w- I would try it again like if someone else uh if someone else had it because i don't think the person kept it either i think it didn't make it to their list but it was probably a bad play experience not a bad game for sure awesome all right well that was subterra but the game originally <laughs> was D- dice settlers by niskin nskn game